Good morning, everyone. Oh, it's good to be in church, amen? Hey, just don't, don't be concerned. If you're concerned about the baptism tonight, we've already sent guys out, and they're cutting holes in the ice, so it'll be ready for us tonight when we get there. Praise God. It's going to be awesome. Praise God. I'm so excited. And if you haven't signed up, it's not too late. Come out. If you've never been a part of one of our baptisms, come out and, and enjoy it. It is, even if you just want to kind of like observe, just come out and observe. It is, it's such an awesome time and it just uh, with the Lord and it just the presence of God is there. And we've seen so many awesome miracles take place at baptisms. It's been, it's something to, to see. So I just really, really encourage you to come out Sunset Beach tonight. It's going to be great. Praise God. What's interesting is the water is going to actually feel warm because the air is cold. So. <laughs> but when I get out of the water, <laughs> that's when it starts feeling cold. I've already reached out to some of the leaders and said, hey, just want to make sure I'm hearing from God. Did you hear from God about leading baptism today so I can stand on shore? <laughs> Nobody's answered me yet, but uh, <laughs> no, I wouldn't miss it. I, I love it. It is such a wonderful privilege and honor to be a pastor and be your pastor and to do the water baptism. And, uh, you know, we, we just, when, when people come out into the water, you know, I don't, you know, I don't have a particular script or anything like that. We just tell them, we just, we just hear from the Lord. So we just, I just pray. And as they're coming out there, we just take a moment together and just pray and just let the Lord minister specifically to each person. And, uh, man, I've, I've just seen some awesome miracles take place. Just, just standing there in the water, the Lord just begins to give me stuff to pray over their life. And I mean, I remember just a few instances, this, they just begin to weep and cry. Like, and I don't even know some, I've never even met some of the people that come out there before, but just the Lord is just ministering to their heart. And it's just, it's just, a, it's just an awesome time. So uh, I, I really do look forward to it and, uh, and want to encourage you all to come out as a body. Even if you've been baptized, it's really cool to come support those who are making a decision for Christ. So it's also a neat thing to do that as a body of Christ. Praise God. Well, do you have your Bible with you this morning? Yeah. Or something to look up the, the Scriptures, right? So go with me to uh, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 21, please. I'm going to read um, the, the Amplified Classic Edition this morning here. And I want to point out some things uh, specifically that the Amplify uh, highlights. Um, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to start out by asking you a question this morning, and this is the question. The question is, how many of you can tell from reading your Bible that Jesus was spiritually aware of his surroundings? You tell that Jesus was spiritually aware of his surroundings. Well, the Lord would have us to be spiritually aware of of our surroundings also. And that's today what I want to talk about. I'm still in this teaching, understanding the power of God. And this morning, we're going to talk about spiritual awareness. Spiritual awareness. There's so much going on in the earth today. I mean, it just seems like it just, it's just like gaining momentum, it's just like things happening all over the place. Now, I'm not saying that things weren't happening in previous years, Probably our access to information has increased greatly, and so we're kind of more aware, but it's almost, in some ways, information overload for a lot of people. And there, there's so much uh, negative and so much darkness and, and, and doom and gloom talk out there that it's so important that the church is spiritually aware of really what's going on and that we don't get so focused on what's going on in the world that it captures our attention and we kind of lose sight of what God's doing in the earth today. Amen? All right, praise God. Go with me to Matthew 6, 21 here, and it says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. He says, the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is surrounded, or excuse me, if your eye is sound, excuse me, your entire body will be full of light. I think that's very interesting. 
if the eye is the lamp of the body, and he says if your eye is sound, your entire body will be full of light. Say that with me. Your entire body will be full of light. There's something to say about that, okay? He, let me keep reading. He says, but if your eye is unsound, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the very light in you, your conscience, is darkened, how dense is that darkness? He goes on to say how to, no man can serve two masters. We've read this before in this church. Jump down to verse 25. He says, therefore I tell you, stop being perpetually uneasy, anxious, and worried about your life. Stop being perpetually uneasy, anxious, and worried. Okay? Now, God does not want us to be perpetually uneasy or anxious about our life. Would you agree? He does not want us lost. Remember the, the, the story of the prodigal son? Remember he asked for inheritance, he takes it, he goes, he spends all his inheritance, and next thing you know, he has no money, there's a famine in the land, and he has no food. And he's looking and he's feeding the pigs and he's so hungry that he's, I don't know if he's tempted or he actually ate what the pigs were eating. That will bring you to a place of anxiety, I could say, right? Why? He was lost, but he came to his senses and he returned back home to his father. Is that right? And this is a picture of us coming to our heavenly father. If you're a child of God, you're not lost. Well, at least you shouldn't be lost. There's no reason for you to think you're lost because you have light. Amen? And last week I talked about how the Word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Is that right? Well, He doesn't want us lost. He doesn't want us wondering about our future uh, uncertain about our future, uh, fearful about our future. Amen? He doesn't want us confused and worrisome about anything. Nothing. He doesn't want us, what, what did we read there? Perpetually uneasy, anxious, and worried about our life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can live free from that way of living. Glory to God. And if you, say, if you say, ah, I don't know how that could possibly be, or if you start making excuses for yourself and allowing for yourself to be anxious and worried about things, stop it. <laughs> Today, it stops. And I'm going to teach you how to do that, okay? Glory to God. This is part of the power of of God that's available for your life. Hallelujah. He goes on, talks about how uh, being worried and being anxious in verse 27. How, he says, who of you, by being worried and being anxious, can add one unit of measure or cubit to his stature or to, to the span of his life? You, by being worried, can't add anything to your life. I'm going to say that again. You, by being anxious or worried, can't add to your life. In fact, it takes away from your life. All right? Every, every, every child of God can live free from worry and anxiety. And if you don't know how, praise God, Faith in God. <laughs> Faith in His Word. I'm going to make it real simple for you. Is how you live free from anxiety and worry and cares. And when the cares come, because the cares will come, all right? They'll come. But you can do something with every care that comes at you in life. And you can cast that care 
over upon him. Because the Bible says, he cares for you. Hallelujah. Say carefree. Care free. Worry free. free. Anxious free. Anxious free. Perpetually uneasy. Perpetually. Free from it. Free. Hallelujah. Oh, this is the freedom that the body of Christ needs to be walking and living in every day of our life. And this is something that you, if you're not used to it, let, let me say it like this. You know that you can develop a habit of worry? You can develop a habit of worry? And you can, you, there are things that you can, that, that you can start worrying about, and if you just keep meditating on those things, the next thing you know, you're worrying about things that you never thought you'd worry about. And then when those things are taken care of, you'll worry about something that you don't even know that might worry about because you don't have nothing to worry about. <laughs> People worry because they don't have something to worry about. Well, I just know something bad's about to happen because everything's going too smooth right now. I've heard people say that. Everything's going good, but I just know something bad's about to happen. They're like setting themselves up, waiting for the worry to come, right? They're like, oh, let's worry now about something that's about to come. The Bible specifically talks to us right here in the book of Matthew about doing that very thing. Don't worry about tomorrow. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is good news for you. Jesus perceived many things in the Bible. He perceived people's thoughts. He perceived situations. He perceived what was going on. He had a spiritual awareness of things around him. Say spiritual awareness. God wants us to know that we have a spiritual awareness available to us as Christians, as children of God. Now, I'll do my best to try to help you um, know what that sort of looks like or is like. Um, but the best thing for you is just to discover it on your own. You know, I mean, I'll do the best I can, but when, when you begin to discover this spiritual awareness for your life, it, 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 there, it, it is very, very, very beneficial for your life. And it's, it'll help you, especially if you're accustomed to worrying, it'll help you to learn how to walk free from that way of living. And not only can people develop in worry, but the, the, the reverse is true. You can develop in your life to where you're worry-free. There are things today that I don't worry about that I used to worry about. There are a lot of things that I don't worry about today I don't even take the thought of them. <laughs> uh, uh, it just doesn't, they don't even come into my thought process anymore. Now, that wasn't always the case. But I developed in this by walking by faith, according to the Word of God, learning how to pray about things, learning how to speak faith and words of life and victory and authority over things. Now, I'm not... I don't have it all figured out. I'm still working on plenty of areas of my own life where this is concerned. But there are things today that I don't worry about that, I used, to, that used to concern me and be heavy on me. Here's one thing that, that, that used to bother me and used to be heavy on me. And it might sound silly to you if, you, if, if maybe you're not, you've never worried like this. But when we had one of our businesses uh, early on, my wife and I ran a business and Every Friday, I could, I'd wake up, and, even, and then it would creep into Thursday, I could feel the pressure of payroll. Payroll. Payroll was coming Friday. And I could feel the pressure of, are we going to have enough money to make payroll this week? Now, I heard people laughing. I know, that sounds silly and funny, Right? And then as soon as we'd get payroll, you know what was after that? Payroll tax. 
If the payroll didn't get you, the payroll tax was right behind it, right? And if you've owned your own business, you know, you, you maybe have a clue of what I'm talking about where these things are concerned, right? Now, everybody else on Friday, they come into work, oh, happy, it's Friday, it's payday, right? Well, guess what? Payday was resting on my shoulders and on my wife's shoulders, like, oh, <laughs> you get that, that check committed, you gotta get that over here. Guess what? I don't worry about payroll anymore. We run multiple businesses today, ministry. I haven't even put a thought to payroll in years. I don't even know what day each company is on payroll. I don't even know what day payroll goes out. I don't even think about it. I'm thinking and focused on other things. But guess what? I could, I could be standing here today and I could still be worrying about payroll if I didn't learn how to walk by faith and overcome that. Because the devil will keep you going around the same mountain your entire life until you learn how to walk by faith out of that. Hallelujah. This part of this process is spiritual awareness. Being aware of the Word of God, being aware of what's available to you as a child of God, being aware of, of things around you, being aware of what you have access to, the promises of God. Stop being perpetually uneasy and anxious and worried about your life. Amen? And if, if you're in the habit of worrying, Maybe you've developed that. Maybe you came from a family. Don't raise your hand, but yeah, I'm just going to ask a question, but don't raise your hand. You ever come from a family of warriors? Yeah, mom worried, maybe dad worried, and you worried, and grandpa worried, and your aunts and uncles worried, and your brother and sister worried, whatever. It happens. You could like have a culture of people who worry and worry about all kinds of things, but glory to God, you could live free from Worry. I mean, talk about worry of everything in your life. Just absolutely worry-free. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let me keep reading. Look at verse 31. He says, therefore, do not worry and be anxious, saying. Okay. Now, he says here, therefore, do not worry and be anxious, or be anxious, saying. One of the greatest temptations that goes with worry is talking about what you're worrying about. And the scriptures point out here, not only don't be worried about it, not only don't be anxious about it, but don't be worried and anxious saying. Because once you say it, now you're, you're signing up for another level of it. <laughs> It's one thing to, you know, have, you know, like, well, Joyce Meyer wrote a book, Battlefield of Mind, where you know, got the worried thoughts that come, but every worried thought that comes, you can cast that worried thought down. Everyone that comes, cast it down. The scriptures tell us, cast every thought, hold every thought obedience to Christ. Where another worried thought comes, cast it down. How do I cast it down? Well, saying I will not worry about that another day of my life. And if that worried thought comes back, you say, no, you know, I don't know, maybe it would say, let's just say examples of financial worry or something. Say, no, nope, my God meets all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I'm not taking the worried thought about that ever again in my life. I remember I would worry about payroll, and then I'd worry about taxes, and then I'd worry about property taxes, then I'd worry about stuff breaking down, and then how am I going to fix this, and how am I going to have money for that, and how are we going to pay this, how are we going to do that? It, was, it, would just, it would just build and build on itself. But praise God, I don't live like that anymore. And you don't have to live like that anymore. And don't, don't go, well, you know, it's easy for you because, no, it's not easy for me. It's no easier for me than it is for you. You and I have equal rights and access to God's provision and his word to live worry-free. But here he says, therefore, do not worry and be anxious saying. That's saying. And when you're tempted to say it, just stop yourself in the middle of it and go, nope, 
Not going to say that. Not going to do it. Just stop yourself. I find that when I stop myself in the middle of a worried thought, and, I, and, I, and I'm, go, I'm tempted to say it and talk about it, if I just stop myself and correct myself out loud, it does something on the inside of me. It's like I, I begin to go, okay, all right. How many times are you going to act like that, you dodo? You know, it's kind of how I talk to myself at times. But, but he goes on here and he says, but seek, aim at, strive after, first of all, above all these things, right? There is something that we do seek after. There is something that we do strive after. There is something, and it's his kingdom, his righteousness, his way of doing and being right. And then it says, and all these things, say it with me, and all these things shall be added to you besides. Now, it's interesting because I've had people come to me and say, well, you know, he's only talking about spiritual things. No, he's not just talking about spiritual things because he's talking about physical things. Or he's talking about food. He's talking about clothing. He's talking about where you're going to live. He's talking about natural things. When you seek first the kingdom of God, he says all these things will be added to you, the things that you're tempted to worry about and have anxiety about. He'll add them to your life. The things that you have need of, he'll add them to your life. Amen. How many of you have ever experienced God adding things to your life and you didn't have to seek after him? Glory to God, you should see the hands in the room. Praise God. You know, every hand can be raised in the room. Every one of us. You just begin to seek after him, after his will, what his word says. And then these, these things that, that, that you used to, you know, like, want or need or whatever so bad next thing you know they're just added to you and you're you're not even thinking about it you're not worried about it you don't have anxiety about it ever again in your life praise god this is very powerful praise god that you and i have been given the holy spirit go with me to um the book of john verse 14 he says here in John 14, 12, it says, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done. Glory to God. This is Jesus speaking here, right? It's in red. He says, anyone who believes in me. Do I have some people in this church that believe in Jesus? Amen, Amen right? So anyone, say anyone. Anyone who believes, okay, so the believing is a qualifier, right? It's someone who believes in me will do, will do, glory to God, the same works I have done. You say, well, I, I, I'm, I'm not doing the works that Jesus did. Well, then you better check your believing. Well, I don't think it's me. Well, I don't think it's him. <laughs> All right, I'll leave you alone. And even greater works. And even greater works. Say it. And even greater works. Wow. <laughs> How many of you signed up for that? Not only the works that Jesus did, but even greater works. It's in our Bible. Amen? Amen. He says, because I am going to be with the Father. Now, let's just take a minute on this, and let's think about this. Because he's saying, Jesus is saying, anyone who believes on me, the things that I have done, you shall do, and even greater work shall you do. And he says, because I'm going to the Father. Now that, they, they could get, now you got to just put yourself in these disciples' shoes just for a minute, okay? They're sitting there, they've walked with Jesus, they've talked with Jesus, they've, they've fellowshiped with him, they've gone from city to city to city, and they have seen these mighty works that have taken place. Is that right? He's gone into these cities, and he's gone to a place where every person in the entire city gets healed. Is that fantastic? 
I know that's the right word, but that is just so awesome, okay? Now, just picture this. Now, again, you have Jesus. He's saying this to them. They've been walking with him. They've seen the results of his ministry. Now, they've seen blind eyes open. They've seen people that had this dreaded disease of leprosy healed and made whole. Remember, we talked about that. The power of God did not only heal, but make whole. They've seen uh, the, the lame to walk. They've seen the maimed restored. And now he's saying the works I do shall you do. <laughs> and then he says, I like it, he like puts whipped cream on top and even greater works. All right? But then these next few words had to be a little much. Because now, again, they're only thinking natural in a lot of ways. And he says, <laughs> because I am going, wait a minute, because you're going? No, 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 you're not going anywhere. <laughs> you, we've only begun. We've only been at this a few years. And it's going to get better because you're going? And you're going to be with the Father? Time out. How is it going to get better if you leave? Because it was terrible before you showed up. But ever since you showed up, we've seen all these miracles and all these mighty works and power of God in action. And now you're telling us that we're going to do what you did in even greater works because you're going. Well, if that's the case, and we know that is the case, we need to focus on what was coming. Glory to God. And what was coming was the Holy Spirit. Whoo! <laughs> you can ask for anything in my name, and I will do it. So that the Son can, be, can bring glory to the Father. He says it again, in case you didn't hear him the first time. Yes. Ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. If you love me, obey my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. Oh, there he is. Who will never leave you. Okay. There's the secret sauce. <laughs> Wait, it's going to get better if, if I go... It, 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 you leave, it's going to get better, and now he begins to reveal why it's going to get better, right? Because the one who I'm going to give you, the advocate, who will never leave you, he is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. Who leads into all truth. Say it with me. Who leads into into all truth. If you're led into truth, you can live free from worry. It's only when you're living in darkness when people start to worry, when start, people start to get anxious, when people start to get concerned. But when you're led into truth, there's no need to worry. Because you have the truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth what will it do? Set you free. Set you free from what? Worry? Anxiety? Cares? Absolutely. Glory to God. Woo, praise God. He says, He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive Him because it isn't looking for Him and doesn't recognize Him. But you know Him. Say, I know Him. He said, because... He lives with you now, and later will be in you. And he was talking about that later, what we read in the book of Acts chapter 2. Is that right? Where that upper room where the Holy Spirit came in and endued them with power. Amen? Glory to God. He says, no, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. He is giving them a promise of the Holy Spirit, and that promise was fulfilled. 
We are now living in a day and in an age where you and I have full access to the Holy Spirit. Huh. We can be aware of things that are happening around us. We can be aware of things happening in the spiritual realm. Now, I said this first service, I'm not talking, and I'm not, I'm not saying that you know everything that's happening. Frankly, that would be overload, really. But you can know key things, and you can have what I call a sense and a knowing of what's going on. It's like a glimpse. It's like you have this awareness. You have help. And this awareness and this help enables you and equips you to be able to sort of see into and know, and it equips you to pray, and it equips you to say. Say, I'm equipped to pray and to say. That's what this spiritual awareness is key for. I'll give you an example. A few years ago, most of you know the story. I was driving to church one morning early, maybe around 5.30, 6. And the Lord just showed me, not, a, not physically showed me, just in my heart, a man. And I didn't know the man. I didn't see his face. I couldn't recognize him. It wasn't like I saw a face of a man. I just saw a man. And I don't know how to explain it, because when the Lord reveals things to me, he just kind of reveals like this was a person, but I distinctly knew it was a man. And I didn't know what to do with that other than I just began to pray in the Spirit for whomever this was. And I did this for two or three minutes on my drive in to my office that morning. I got into my office, I set up my things, opened my Bible, began to pray. And I think it maybe came back to me one more time in my prayer time that morning. Didn't think a whole lot about it. Wasn't sitting there stressed about it. Wasn't Worry, because that's not what the Lord does. He gives you something like that. You don't have to sit and go, oh, well, what about it, God? I'm not sure what to do with this. <laughs> don't panic. Just begin to pray. And so I began to pray. I did that. Now, first service comes around. I go out. I'm ministering the gospel from the pulpit. And while I'm ministering, the Spirit of the Lord reminds me again of that man. And it was like, and I don't know how to explain it other than this. It was like he tapped me on the shoulder. But it was, it was just like this reminder, and it was on this left shoulder. And I'm ministering, and I'm trying to think about what I'm trying to say to the people, right? But the Lord kept prompting me on this. And w- now, what this is, it's just, a, it's just a spiritual awareness that he gives us. I said he gives it to us. And he's given it to us in the person of the Holy Spirit. And so... As I'm ministering, I'm, I'm trying to concentrate, and I finally just go, okay. So I just stop in the middle of the message, and some of you were there, and I had everybody stand your feet, because I didn't know what to do with it other than pray. This spiritual awareness equips us to pray and to say. And so we stopped. I had everybody stand your feet. I said, let's just pray for people that need to find a church and need to go to a church and need to unchurch, church. So we, we prayed. We all pointed a different direction. We prayed for a few minutes. We sat down. And then that, that subsided, that prompting. And then a few minutes later, John, this gentleman over here, walks into our church for the very first time. What none of us knew, including myself, was John was looking for a quiet place to commit suicide. So he pulled into our parking lot, and he put a gun in his mouth and pulled the trigger, of which didn't go off twice. I didn't know all that. None of us knew that. But the Spirit of God did know that. The Holy Spirit knows all. Okay? And he stands up there, and I, we finished the first service, and he actually left. He walked out. Second service starts. He comes back into second service. He stands, he's in the back of the service. And then about, 
I don't know, three quarters of the way through that service. Again, some of you know the story. He walks down and he sits on the second row right over on, on this side, is at our other location on this side. And while I'm ministering, he says, oh yeah, I want that and I need that. And I stopped the service and I said, I've had you, I, I've noticed you since you walked in. Now, as soon as I saw him, I knew this was the spiritual awareness the Lord had given me for a man that morning on the way in to the office. Now listen, I'm not super spiritual man. This isn't like, oh, well, you're a pastor and you have this. Listen, he'll work through me, but he'll work through you. And most of you know the story, but Lord, at that time, now this is that, it goes with this spiritual awareness I, I was just asking of the Lord. You can ask of the Lord in here, you know, do I stop the service and minister to this guy right now? Because he says, I want that and I need that. And the Lord says, finish the message. And I finished the message. When I got done with the message, I got done. I called for Miss Linda. I said, Miss Linda, will you come up here? She came up here. I said, stand here and pray and please pray in the spirit. And she stood over here and prayed in the spirit. I stepped towards John as soon as I stepped towards John, now everybody was standing up because we were closing out the service. John fell immediately to the ground with his face plastered on the carpet. And John got set free, delivered, and saved. Yep. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. In that process, I haven't shared all of this story. In that process, at one point, John did get up. And we were, we were praying for him, and it was difficult for him. He did get up, and he gave me a hug. And the Lord says, no, it's not over. Now, it was interesting, because he got up, gave me a hug. Everybody clapped, kind of like just now, right? Like, oh, praise God, everything's good. And the Lord said, no, it's not good. It seemed like it in the natural, but the Lord said, no, it's not good. Because he hadn't said Jesus is Lord. And he was dealing with demonic influences on his life. And I knew in my heart, now I didn't know, I didn't know what to say. I'd never been through this whole process like this, right? That he had to say, Jesus is Lord. And when he said, Jesus is Lord, we have it on, t on, on video. He Jesus is Lord. He was free. That's when he got free. Because it's at that name that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. It's that name. Yes. It's that name that's above every other name that name. Never seen the guy in my life before. Didn't know anything about him. God not only set him free, but God healed him of a disease, a terminal disease. And that's why he pulled into the parking lot to commit suicide is because he had had enough of the disease, not to mention the PTSD, uh, that the flashbacks he was dealing with from his military background. And it was the culmination of it all coming on him. You know what? He was perpetually worried and anxious about his future. But that day, he got set free from that worry about his future. And Jesus is who gave him the hope for his future. And you might be already saved. You might be already saved, but you're still worrying. You need to remind yourself that God holds your future. And he has a wonderful future. Plans of good and not of evil. To give you a hope and a future. And an expected end. Say expected end. Praise God. It just, it just get free. You get free from all the worry, from sickness, from disease. I mean, I know young, healthy people that say, I'm probably going to die of cancer someday. You see how the enemy is working on their mind and getting them to worry about something that they don't even have today. And then they start saying it. You see? They start saying it they are setting themselves up 
right, playing right into the hand of the devil. And I'm telling you, you are more spiritually aware than that. You really need to remind yourself, no, I have the advocate. I have the one that Jesus said that he's sending who is greater and that I can do the works that Christ did and even greater works because I have the mighty, powerful Holy Spirit dwelling in me. And I don't have to worry about anything. He holds my future. And my future's good. I have a good future. Praise God. Oh, glory. <laughs> Let's keep reading. Go, go to Matthew chapter 16. And we're going to look at something here. Verse 13, praise the Lord, man, so important that you know that you have a, a spiritual awareness of what's going on around you. The things that you need to know, the Spirit of the Lord will reveal those to you. And just go ahead and ask Him, it's okay. Say, Lord, you know, I don't really, I'm not really sure about this in the natural but Lord, I know that you, 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 know, you know the end from the beginning, you know? And just talk to him like you would talk to anybody and just say, Lord, you know, I'm not, I, I don't naturally know what, what's coming or what's going on or what to do about this. But Lord, will you please just reveal it to me? Reveal it to my heart. Give me a, give me a spiritual sense and awareness of, of it so, so I can know. He'll prepare you. He'll prepare you. Amen? He loves you. He is the best communicator there ever is. The Holy Spirit. He, he communicates the will of God to us. That's powerful. I don't know about you, that's powerful. Look at here. He says, when Jesus came to, to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, who do you say that the Son of Man is? Now, I just, again, I like to how I read my Bible and how I kind of put myself in this, I don't know, this scenario, is I like just to think about, okay, here you have Jesus, and you have his disciples around, and he's asking, you know, he's asking these guys, you know, he says, who do people say that I, the Son of Man, say the Son of Man. He didn't call himself the Son of God, he called himself the Son of Man. He says, who do people say that I am or the Son of Man is? Well, they replied. Now, just think about this. They're sitting around. I could hear one of them go, hey, I heard the other day, one guy said you're John the Baptist. He thinks you're John the Baptist. Oh. Another guy go, hey, I heard a guy say he thinks you're Elijah. Ah. Oh. And then somebody else says, oh, others say that you're Jeremiah. And then somebody else in the back goes, you know, I think some people just think you're like just one of the prophets. Then he asked, but who do you say that I am? All right, now, who do you say that I am? Now, he's pulling something out of him, isn't it? He's pulling something out of him. And what he's pulling out of him is a spiritual awareness, right? Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Woo! Jesus replied, you are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. It's interesting that when he asked, who do men say that I am, none of them said, you're the Messiah. They all said, well, you're this person, or you're that person, or you're this person. But then Simon Peter says, thou art Christ, the Son of the living God, or the Messiah, the Son of God, right? And he says, you did not learn this from any human being. There is information, what I call revelation, that God wants you to know that you can't get from any human being for your life. You just can't get it because they don't got it. And you might go to this person, go to that person, go over here. I mean, listen. If you're messing around with psychics and tarot cards, stop it. 
It is demonic, and it is a trap from the devil, and it's all to try to get you to look to another source other than the spirit of the living God who's living on the inside of you. You do not want to go down that road. And if you've gone down that road, repent and say, I'm never doing that again in my life. God is in love with you, and he has a great desire to reveal to you what you need to know. Frankly, if he doesn't reveal it, you don't need to know it. You don't need to know it. Well, I just got to know. No, you don't got to know. If he would need to know, you go to him. And if he says it, then you'll know. And if he doesn't say anything, then you don't need to know. Well, I'm just so anxious, I need to know. No, that's the problem. You don't need to know. Knock it off. Get your focus on something else. See, what's happening is the eye of the body. <laughs> the eye, the Bible talks about in Matthew that we read, is, is, is the light, it's a lamp. And where the eye is, where you look, where you focus on, you can either let light in or darkness in. But if the eye be single, the whole body is full of light. Single on what? On one king and one kingdom. He makes it so simple. He makes it so simple. You don't have to go over here. You don't have to go over there. You don't have to go to this person. You don't have to go there. You don't have to go to this church service and that church and run over here and run over there and go over there. You don't have to do that. He makes it that simple. Because he'll minister to you. He'll reveal to you. He is very personal. He knows who's in your parking lot when you can't see him in your parking lot. He does. He knows the end from the beginning. And he knows how for you to live a blessed life. Let me get back to this. He says, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. He said, flesh and blood has not revealed that to you. Or he says, no human, you didn't learn this from any human being. Now I say to you, Peter, which means rock, upon this rock I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. Whew. It doesn't matter what hell throws at you. When you hear from God, it can't overcome you. He says, and I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now look at this. I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Say it. I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Look here. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Who's the subject here? You. Whatever you, I'm going to say it again, whatever you permit. Oh, I just can't help it. Whatever you permit. Whatever you forbid. The King James says, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I'm just reminding you, church, that you have the ability to bind and loose, to forbid or to permit. And a lot of Christians go through life, they have no idea that they hold that power and ability. And it's been given to you through the name of Jesus Christ. And he says, the gates of hell will not prevail. So this is the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Glory. Glory to God. Can you imagine, just, just for a minute, imagine if every born again child of God were to stand up and forbid the enemy from doing a particular thing in our land, what would happen? Listen, instead of, instead of talking about the news, talk to the news. Now, I know this gets some people like, hey, I didn't come to church for this kind of talk. 
You hear about, let's just say you hear about like a school shooting or some, you know, something like that. Don't be fearful and anxious about it for your kids. Don't do it. You know what you do? You say, not my kid's school. Not my grandkid's school. No, I, I, forbid, I forbid you, you, you foul spirit of, of destruction and death. You will not wreak havoc in my kid's school in the name of Jesus Christ. No, no, greater, the greater one reigns on our campuses. And, and, and then don't just stop at your kid's school. You begin to proclaim it on every school in, in your area. So no, no, it's not happening at Tarpon High School. It's not happening at Clearwater High School. It's not happening at Palm Harbor University. It's not happening at Mitchell High School, at River Ridge High School. No, it is not happening around here in Jesus' name. I'm in this area and in this region for a reason, and I forbid it from happening in Jesus' name. And I bind every demonic spirit that would try to drive a young person or whoever to try to bring destruction and death. Or it, could, it, it may not be that, maybe. It's like you're afraid of your kids driving a car. You know, and then you begin to just pray over your children driving a car. Say, no, 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 my children, they're enveloped in Jesus' name. They hear from the Lord. They have wisdom and discretion. They're wise in you, Lord. They look to you, and I thank you that your angels are encamped around about, front to back, top to bottom, bumper to bumper. They will not be in an incident, accident, or destruction in Jesus' name. Angels, you lift them up lest they dash their foot against the stone. I mean, this is just some of the stuff you can do as a Christian. Did you know you can do this? this is probably, everybody probably already knows this in the room, but I'm just reminding you. Because sometimes, sometimes we get lazy where this is concerned. All right? And you speak over your body. I thank you that every cell in my body is healed and whole. I thank you that cancer is not in my body. I thank you that heart disease is not a part of my life in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord. That, and just go, just start begin speaking to your body, man. If, if it's diabetes or it's whatever it is, you speak to your liver, you speak to your colon, you speak to every part of your body. What are you, God, what are you doing? Are you kidding me? I am doing what the Word of God really tells us to do, which is to speak life. People will sit there and worry and talk negative about their physical bodies, well, you can turn that right around in the face of the devil and speak life. Yeah. Not too much for you, is it? You're, you're at the right place, I'm telling you. You're at the right church, I promise you. You're at the right church. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is, this is an empowerment that the body of Christ has that they don't even know they have. And I know you don't, if you wait until you feel like talking like I just talked, you're going to be waiting a really long time. Because it's not usually what you feel like doing is talking like that. And I, myself included, you know. And if, if you take medication for something, you, you, before you even put that in your mouth, just as if it was food, you say, Lord, I thank you that this medication is blessed. It does not cause any harm to my body. I receive all the benefits and none of the side effects in Jesus' name. But I thank you, Lord, that you're my healer. You're my provider. You're my source of life, not this medicine. I thank God for the people developed, but thank God I am free from sickness, disease, infirmity, and poverty. And I'm getting stronger every day of my life in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Well, I mean, we, we know we're supposed to do that with food. Why wouldn't we do that with medicine? And then just laugh. And just remind yourself that a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Glory to God. you get something out of this today? Stand to your feet, please. Let's stop right there. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, don't be thinking, well, I didn't want to go to the baptism because I don't want to catch a cold. You're not going to catch a cold. You're going to catch life. Hallelujah. How about catch a healing? How's that? Years ago, I got to tell this testimony. Years ago, years ago, my daughter, who's now 17, she was probably, how old do you think she was? But 
probably six or seven years old, okay? I went outside, I was working in my yard, and uh, she came out, she had, a, she, uh, she had a bottle, no, I had a bottle of water, and I took a drink of the bottle of water, and she wanted a drink of my water. Well, my throat was kind of sore and kind of scratchy at the time, and I said, oh, honey, you know, I said, I don't want you to drink after me. Uh, you know, dad's been dealing with a little bit of a scratchy throat like that. And she looks at me and she grabs that water and she goes, well, I'm healed. I said, well, I know, but I don't want you to catch it. She goes, takes a drink to it. She goes, well, now you're healed. <laughs> some of you, some of you just grossed out. I just grossed you out right there, right? But it was like she was teaching me that the healing in her could transfer to me rather than the sickness on me transferring to her. And I was a pastor. <laughs> Why did I think of that? You know, some people are like, that's too much for them. But hey, you think Jesus was worried about catching a cold or a... You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the power of your word, the power of your name. Thank you for causing us and, and having us to be spiritually aware of things that we need to know so that we can pray and so that we can say. So that we're not caught off guard. Lord, we yield ourselves to you, to your, to your leadings, to your promptings. Thank you for being our help. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you've been worried about something, make a decision you're not going to worry about it anymore. And then proclaim. You need to proclaim the Word of God, okay? You need to use the Word of God like a sword, okay? Don't just say, well, I'm not going to worry about it anymore. Well, you have to do something to not worry about it anymore and proclaim life, proclaim God's Word over it, okay? Praise God. If you're here and you've never accepted Jesus into your heart, into your life, made Him Lord of your life, we want to give you that opportunity. As I dismiss, you can come out of your seat and come up here let us pray with you. Hey, or if you'd like prayer, over anything, any area of your life. Maybe you were saved and you're young, but you haven't been living for the Lord and you kind of drifted away, so to speak, you know what I mean? And you want to just get back with the Lord and just like, you know, I want to just, ah, and you need some prayer and agreement. Come up here, let us pray with you. We're here to join our faith with your faith and we believe God for miracles in this church and we see miracles take place in this church. Remember, you're ahead and not the tail, above and not beneath, blessed going in, blessed going out. Everything you set your hand to, you're the lender, not the borrower. We'll see you tonight. You're dismissed.